Does God want the narcissist to be saved? That is a really big question in a lot of people's minds, and understandably so. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome to Narcissism Exposed. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. Well, to begin with, the narcissist has not exactly developed a really good reputation with all the pain and suffering that he or she causes and the destruction and the damage. It's understandable that a lot of hurt people that have been directly affected by the narcissist isn't thinking too favorably about him or her. And the thing we want to do though is take our own feelings out of the picture, right? And we want to give it to a higher power, give this answer, the answer to this question to a higher power, and that's God Almighty. So we're gonna take a little look into God's word to get this answer. So I'm not gonna just give you a yes or no. I'm gonna let you see from the scriptures that I share with you what God's word says about, does he want the narcissist to be saved? And the first verse we're going to look at is in Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, which is in the Old Testament, chapter 18, verse 23. And it says, Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? Well, that's what God's word says, is that he says, I don't take pleasure that even the wicked should die but that they should turn from their evil ways. So that's the first verse we want to talk about. And evil ways have gone, have been around for a long, long time. Um, there's a scripture that says there's nothing new under the sun. So there were wicked people back then, back in the Bible times. There's wicked people today. So the, the, the characteristics are the same. Maybe the names have changed. But wicked is wicked is wicked. And God's word in that verse says that he would not even have them to perish, but to turn away from their evil ways. Then the next verse, which is really fantastic, is going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. So we're moving away from the Old Testament and we're getting into the Gospels, which are the, the, the times of Jesus Christ and his ministry and what God had called him to do, which is to save mankind. And John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. <clears throat> so God's will is that he loves, so loves mankind. He loves the world. He didn't say, well, I'm just, I just love the, the good people, the empaths, the people that do good. He so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that who, uh, whosoever believes in him <clears throat> should have everlasting life. So that is also available to the narcissist. He or she has it available to them to confess and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and believe that God raised him from the dead. So that is available to them. It's an open door to everyone in the world. So now we're seeing God's feelings about the world in as a whole, that he wants, he wants to give that opportunity to everyone. Now we're gonna take a, a look at another verse. This one is in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And it says, God, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God would have all men to be saved. If it was up to him, he would have everyone to be saved. But God gave everyone freedom of will, which is so incredibly beautiful because God believes in freedom that you come to him by way of his son, Jesus Christ, 
through your own decision, your own will, unlike the devil that possesses people. And so when you look at this verse, the narcissist has the opportunity again to be saved because God has made that open inv invitation, right? That uh, Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So that's an open invitation to everyone, good, bad, indifferent, evil, narcissist, that is available to all of us, all of mankind. And there's a final verse that I want to share with you. This one is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God would love for everyone to come to repentance, to repent of their ways and to get born again and to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord. God Almighty gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice for us, for mankind, that we could be saved. So the answer, and I want you to answer in your head, right there personally inside of you, you know from those scriptures, the obvious answer is yes, God would have the narcissist to be saved. But the, the question to each narcissist or any toxic evil person is, do you want to be saved? Do you want to come to a knowledge of the truth of God's word that sets you free? Do you want to repent of your ways? I know we, those of us who are in relationships or have been in past relationships with narcissists, we, we would love nothing more than to, to have that narcissist repent, to turn from his or her evil ways and do, do good and be a good person and come to a knowledge of the truth of God's word and to get born again and to become a child of God and to at, have good works and, and loving kindness towards people and in their interpersonal relationships, which would be so wonderful, but that has to be the, the narcissist's choice to do that and, is, and no amount of us wanting that for them is going to make it happen. That's why when you're in an abusive relationship like being with the narcissist and as much as, like, like I know in my situation, I shared God's word all the time. And you know, I got the head nodding um, response. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh wow, he's really digging this word. He's really getting it, right? Uh, we're really moving forward, but in the end, it was very, it became more and more clear and evident to me that he was just doing this, the head bobble, uh, and that was all that was happening there because his patterns, his, his um, dis ways of causing suffering and pain never changed, and the more I challenged him about those things, um, every time it just blew up worse and then the the patterns became shorter and shorter the cycles and, and until i finally said that's it that i see what you're doing i see what you are and i as a child of god as a kind empath as a, a somebody who is endeavoring to walk in love i deserve better i deserve somebody just like me and you deserve somebody just like you, you do. And what I want to encourage you is that your future, a future relationship with somebody who is godly and wonderful, loving and kind, and um, just takes such good care of you in an honest and pure way, your future needs to be more important than your feelings that you're feeling right now in this relationship with the narcissist. Understand, 
your future with a good person is looking so much more shiny and amazing than the the darkness that you're in with the narcissist right now and you know you deserve better you deserve somebody who's just like you and but that doesn't mean that when we when we detach ourselves from the narcissist that's not to be mean it's not uh, when they discard us or detach from us or it is to be mean but when we do it we do it with a purpose a, a, a godly purpose and that's to get ourselves away from the darkness right and to dwell in the light right and to walk in goodness and be around people that are good people that are godly people that are loving people and that's why we do it and you know what you can uh, love them and pray for them from afar and God bless them you know I I still pray for my former narcissists and um, you know that I they're in God's hands it's it's if there's any spark or any interest or desire in their heart that's between that's gonna be between them and God now so you've um, you've detached yourself from the narcissist you are on a higher level here when you are praying and um, that you, you're taking care of that that praying for the narcissist on the spiritual level and that's going to provide healing for your heart and that's going to do great things for the narcissist hopefully down the road if he should want God and Jesus Christ in his life so that is the answer yes God would have even the narcissist to be saved but in a, a side note here <clears throat> I want you to save yourself from any more misery being if you're in a situation with a narcissist understand these verses that um, you know you need to be with somebody who is just like you and where you can have a flourishing relationship and that you're no longer going to take any abuse so uh, I hope that this resonated with you and I know I I'm I'm speaking to somebody out there so um, share this with other people that you may know of that are in narcissistic abusive relationships and let me know in the comments below um, how you've handled this topic and a resolution with your narcissist that you had been in a relationship with um, and also if you have any prayer requests we're going to be a praying community here and I thank you for your prayers for me as well so if you did like this video do hit the like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video and until next time walk in peace and stay blessed in your heart